I'll begin out, kind of dive right in for the sake of time, um, by sharing a little bit of what I do. My field is addiction recovery. Um, I work in the field of addiction recovery. And in particular, I provide addiction recovery support with specialization in trauma-informed care and with criminal justice-involved individuals. My work in the field of addiction recovery is also on account of lived experience. I am what has been politically deemed as a returning citizen, having served two decades of my life in the criminal justice system. In 1995, during my senior year of high school, instead of going to West Georgia College to become a physical therapist, I ended up at a very different destination. There weren't those traditional precursors, uh, such as a troubled child, uh, signs and indication that this was going to happen, and this is something that wasn't lost in our government. In the same year, 1995, the CDC and Kaiser Permanente initiated a study to find out why so many of our children were ended up in the criminal justice system. This study was conducted between 1995 and 1997, and when they posted the returns of the results in 1998, I myself wasn't surprised. What they realized on account of this study was that children that experienced two or more traumatic events in their lives, two or more traumatic events that were not addressed, were more likely to end up early promiscuity. I had a daughter that was on her way at the age of 13. Doing drugs, my parents' addiction to crack cocaine warped my own addiction to marijuana and alcohol. Criminal justice involvement, I think I checked that box pretty squarely. And most horrifying for me was the life expectancy of children that experienced just two or more traumatic events that are unaddressed had 25 year less life expectancy. What the government found by studying children like myself, this is something that I knew intuitively. I can remember being in the Clark County Jail when the epiphany hit me. I was laying in my bunk one night trying to figure out why I was not somewhere probably getting ready to pledge. And one event came back to my mind over and over again that I didn't want to embrace it for what it was because it centered around my parents. And this event was a night that I walked in or saw my parents doing a drug of crack cocaine. I was about 11 or 12 years old, and I didn't realize then, of course, but this event shifted me. See, until that point, I did well in school, were involved in social activities, were leaders in my Cub Scouts as well as Boy Scout crew. I longed for my dad's approval. He came to all of my football games. I longed for my mother's embrace, but in that moment, it destroyed my confidence and belief in everything established. Everything that told to me was good was now questioned. I didn't realize it. This traumatic experience will follow by other traumatic experiences. You see, when you have the initial, then it exasperates everything else. So being turned down by this cute girl at the age of 14 had a greater impact on me than it otherwise would have. I remember it clearly. Or being told that you're going to find yourself in a situation that you can't get out of at some point instead of being given that help, it was traumatic impact. I remember this statement clearly. And was the government true in that conclusion? Yes, drugs, sex, criminal behavior became the form of self-medication. During my 10th year of prison, I created a mentor program called Principles Over Passion. And what I realized is that children like myself that had gone through these things, we were always compelled by passion, hurt, trying to get away, trying to change the way that we feel. And I recognized that God had favored me with some insight that in spite of what you feel, you have to have a set of standards that you live by. And this took me back to my Christian upbringing. This took me back to my parents' post-drug use age when my dad always said, son, you have to be the best man that you can be. So I was able to return. Principal Passion became successful in the prison system because I realized that I came from a space that majority of the people that in prison did come from, that was a space that at least had a father in the home. I did have good memories prior to. And this program developed to the point that it became implemented in three different prisons throughout Georgia. What did it do for me meanwhile? 
Well, ultimately, three different prison board and petitioned the parole board for my early release, and I returned home in 2016 after serving 20 years on a sentence of life plus 15 years. So I came here understanding that often society gets it wrong in addressing delinquency because it looked at the behavior as being the disease versus symptoms of something that was much deeper. And I also found out that many parts of our society didn't want to look deeper because then it may place the blame for what's going on squarely at our feet, and we didn't want that. My association with the Athens Park County Sheriff's Office. I approached the previous administration and said, hey, I've facilitated this program in prison. It works. The lived experience, the evidence-based practices, as I had gotten the education and training since being home at work. And I was told, yeah, we believe it. We see what you're doing. But hold on. So I held on to continue to work in the field of addiction recovery. That administration passed. The administration of Sheriff John Q came in. I knew him previously. I'm always I'm the type that I never try to use my relationship as leverage to further my agenda, so I never approach Sheriff Williams about this. One evening, I got a call from Chief Woods. He said, hey, Shane, he said, uh, Sheriff wanted me to call you. He said, we have a problem. I won't tell you what I thought of, but like, no, no. <laughs> And he said, um, what's happening, he said, we have a lot of services and programs at the jail, awesome services and programs, which I know. He said, however, the guys that are in the shoe in the lockdown unit, they can't come out to these programs. He said, they're being locked down 23 hours a day. And he said, man, they're, they're carrying stuff up back there. And one of the things that the chief said that really resonated with me, he said, the way the sheriff and I feel, if it was us back there, we'd be tearing things up too. So he understood that it wasn't about personality. It was something deeper. And chief said, sheriff, want me to extend to you the opportunity to come out to implement your program. The only thing we need to know is what you need, what type of support. We got to get these guys some help. And I came in and immediately they began to work on staff and administration. It's, it's kind of difficult when staff have to accept an ex-convict coming in to teach them how to deal with ex-convicts. And there wasn't a lot of buy-in in the first month or so. But after a while, when they began to see the results, it was like, whoa. And so I conclude by saying the old adage that the cures and the poison is true. God never leaves us in a space where we can't figure out how to make our way back. Kaiser Permanente CDC concluded that at the heart of most juvenile offenses, most criminal offenses, is a wounded child that was never healed. It's traumatic experience that was never addressed. And since trauma is the poison, then we have to look at trauma for the cure. And helping people to address traumatic experiences is the key to getting out of the space that we're in. And this sheriff, this administration, gets it. And while I direct a nonprofit that's publicly funded and cannot publicly say, hey, go do this, if it was me, I would vote for you. <laughs> that's my <opinion. laughs> so Thank you all. And may God bless this, this organization. May God bless the sheriff. May God bless the sheriff office. Yes, sir. What's the name of your organization? Principal, which one? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, so Principal of Passions is my consultancy. I direct people living in recovery. That's a 501c3 nonprofit here in Athens. It's Principal located on Sunday. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you all for your time and thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Y'all gonna hear from me soon enough. Y'all get tired of my mouth. But one of the mouths that poured into my soul and spirit growing up. Uh, anybody here have a big sister? Enough said. My amazing sister is going to come and share a few words with y'all. Uh, I can't tell you how much I love her. She helped raise me. My mom is next to her. Uh, but I wanted her to come and talk because sometimes when you have that sibling relationship, they're going to tell the truth. <laughs> but not so much truth that it Hirsch, no. Uh, but my sister, uh, Saritha Williams, Professor Dr. Saritha Williams, we call her Denise, uh, but she's going to come to the stage and then she'll introduce the video after that. Hi, thank you.
I used to live in Athens some years ago, so I'll just start by saying, go dogs. That's the appropriate thing to do, right? Um, so my brother is a man of principles. And no, I didn't know that that was the name of your organization, but this was the inspiration that I had as um, I was asked to, to say something today. He has strong beliefs and convictions. Believe me, he has opinions, and he is not afraid to make his opinions known. Mayonnaise should not be used on hamburgers or anything else. <laughs> Jay's potato chips from back home are the best. Alan Iverson is the most underrated NBA player. Dogs and cats can be friends. And my macaroni and cheese is the best. Facts. John does not make such assertions without doing his research. He is not a snap judgment kind of guy. Instead, he reads, asks for feedback from others, thinks about all of the evidence before drawing the conclusion that he was right all along. That's the joke. That's the joke. Thank you. I told you to give me a script. <laughs> really, Sheriff Williams is a man of principles. He is a stand-up guy. He can make the tough decisions when needed. He can be the voice of reason in moments of chaos. He does the right thing. In August of 2023, he had to call me with horrible news. My ex-husband, the father of my three children, died unexpectedly in Athens. Q went into action, handling business on behalf of his nieces and nephew until we could make it to Athens. We appreciated that he was the person acting on our behalf. We trusted that he would do the right thing because that's just who he is. This anecdote is one of many anecdotes of care, compassion, and judgment I could share. You probably have your own stories of how Sheriff Williams has helped you or stood by you in difficult times. In a leader, compassion and judgment are important characteristics. Sheriff Williams cares about this community. He is invested in the welfare of Clark County, his adopted home. Community outreach programming and advocacy for better conditions and better pay are examples of the care Sheriff Williams shows for Clark County. People first is a motto Q and I share. We were raised to prioritize family, friends, and community. We were raised to help others, and as Sheriff Q, my brother, has found a calling, a purpose. He has a plan, but he needs your support. And today I ask you to listen carefully to Sheriff Williams as he shows you his heart and tells you what he believes in and fights for. And we'll go ahead and play the video. Thank you. I'm John Q. Williams. Since being elected in 2020, I have delivered on the promise I made to you to be a sheriff for the people. In a short time, my team has achieved so much. Here's a snapshot. We started a new community re-entry program to help break the cycle of incarceration. I made the decision to triple the amount of mental health care resources available to jail residents. The pandemic created more hard times in a town where many of our neighbors already struggled to get by. My team responded with mobile food pantries, back to school giveaway events, and other social programs that my team is committed to carry forward. I strive constantly to revitalize the Sheriff's Office by improving training standards, reducing vacancies, and establishing a new standard of positivity and respect. I hope you'll give me the chance to continue serving our community. I'm Sheriff John Q. Williams, and I humbly ask for your vote in 2024. Okay, so we've got another speaker, but I just want to give some quick acknowledgments here, because just like in that video, I use the word team a lot 
But sometimes I, I need to go deeper in, in saying what that means. So clearly, my mom is here. My sister is here. My wife is going to come up and speak in just a moment here. But I also want to point out, uh, we talk about uh, relationships and partnerships. So these are just some of the folks that we go to regularly. And uh, sponsors, other things. So Coca-Cola helps us out. Uh, AT&T, Piedmont Hospital, there's a lot of folks that help us out when we need funding for some of the events I'm going to talk about later. But also I want to say our Cornerstone Church, Divas Who Win, Billups Grove Baptist Church, Ebenezer West, uh, People Living in Recovery, the Salvation Army, Mount Pleasant Church, Athens Alliance Coalition, who's represented here. Uh, these are all folks that we partner with to try to get things done in this community. And I would be remiss not to talk about my immediate team. Uh, so we got a lot of those members here. Uh, Chief Frank Woods is here. I know I saw Tony Howard, uh, Jimmy Carter. I don't want to like be the one breaking, but he's up for a chief position. I need him with me, but if he gets a chief spot, I'm gonna hold him up there because, <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's fruits of the same tree. So when everybody else does good, we all do good. Uh, Major Swift. Uh, and again, I see some commissioners come in. Former commissioner of Winterville, Amanda, thanks for coming out. Uh, Brian Fries is here. He probably, uh, this is a, for me and a campaign raiser, but outside of that, with the sheriff's office, this is the man that's trying to get our money flowing the way it needs to be. Uh, did I say Eric Swift? This is a dapper gentleman in the, in the corner. Uh, this is how you know how we're doing good things. We get somebody. Don't hold it against him, but he's from California. Well, he spent a lot of time in California. I'm not going to say from, but he's here, and he's helping us out with some different ideas because we need those. We can't just say, hey, Athens problems be solved by Athens folks. We need varying ideas, so we want to focus on that. And with that said, I'm going to bring this team member up because she has to see me every day. Even the days I don't go to work, or if I'm just working from home, or if I'm on a computer, the end of a hard day, she sees what it's like being sheriff, and she feels what it's like being the wife of a sheriff. Chandra, come on. Good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor and a privilege to have all of you here today. I am LaShondra Williams, wife of Sheriff John Q. Williams. What can I say about John Q. Williams as the current sheriff of athens Clark County? First, I want to talk about the role of the sheriff in general. I don't think everyone understands how important the sheriff's office is. The sheriff is the chief law enforcement officer in the county. The sheriff is an elected official that runs the jail and courthouse at a local level. Since the sheriff is the highest ranking law enforcement in the county, he should be a man that works for you and protects you, and he does. The goal of the sheriff's office is service, dignity, respect, and professionalism. The platform of John's first election was built on the bricks of dignity and respect, on treating people with humanity, on building community partnerships, and fighting for criminal justice reform and additional programs for nonviolent offenders. He stands on those same bricks now with the promises kept. For example, the eight week number one staff program in partnership with Action Inc. was created and implemented to enable the residents to learn ways to strengthen, build, establish, or reestablish relationships with their children and families on the outside. The REX program, R-E-Q-S, or Reentry Quality Support, is designed to identify potential obstacles residents may face. Sorry. <clears throat> upon their release from jail. The program works to provide them with resources, education, and training in order to successfully transition back into the community. 
A Rex intake form is completed as soon as the individual is processed into the athens Clark County Jail to assist staff in determining what resources will be needed upon release. The Rex team will then begin working with various community resources to support the specific needs of the resident. The goal of this program is to reduce recidivism. John also partners with Divas Who Win for several women's programs that teach first aid and self-defense classes. Let's not forget about the implementation of Principles Over Passion, taught by Shane Sims that you heard earlier today. In this program, the residents meet with Shane three times per week to discuss their innermost feelings, feels, fears, and failures, but also their dreams. At the end of the eight weeks, they even get to help each other select suits for their beautiful graduation ceremony. Now, what can I say about John Q. Williams on a personal level with a little bit of sheriffiness still thrown in? <clears throat> in addition to being the athens Clark County Sheriff, John is a devoted father, grandfather, son, brother, uncle, friend, and all-around good person. But I have the honor and pleasure of calling him husband. Even with all that goes on, we still try to do date night each week. We also enjoy taking trips all over and going to the movies. Sometimes it's to see a movie and sometimes it's UFC or boxing, which we love to see on the big screen. Um, we enjoy spending time with our family and friends and our two big dogs that still think they're lap dogs. I have to say, I couldn't be prouder of who he is and how much he enjoys caring for our community. I was proud of him for running the sheriff's race the first time and doing so with grace and without mudslinging. Of course, I was extremely proud when he won. One of the proudest moments since winning was the first free back to school event in August of 2021. I still remember sitting outside like it was a dream, reflecting on everything and everyone around me. I still remember the buzzing sounds of the clippers, how it felt outside, the smell of hot dogs and popcorn, and so many kids running around or watching cartoons waiting for their turn. I remember trying to tell John during that event how proud I was of him, but my emotions got the best of me and words would never do it justice. I actually don't remember if I was able to ever verbally share how I felt because I was so choked up, but I'm sure that was probably a better indicator anyway. So we need to ensure this position continues to be held by John Q. Williams, someone who will hold himself and his staff accountable to the people that they serve, regardless of race, ethnicity, or citizenship. Being sheriff is John's ministry, his calling, and his labor of love. Although John loves what he does, this career is not always easy for him or for the people that he surrounds himself with. This excerpt comes from one Pastor Patrick Weaver. Your calling will come with cups, thorns, and sifting that are necessary for your mantle to be authentic, humble, and powerful. Your crushing won't be easy because your assignment is not easy. Your oil is not cheap. So I urge you to vote again for John Q. Williams during the May primary and again in November. He is truly a sheriff for the people who has kept his promises. And now I present to you my husband, your sheriff, John Q. Williams. To talk about being choked up. It, it, it's never easy. And I think the, the folks who know me know it was hard for me to get in the situation that I had to talk myself up. Uh, I've always been one to kind of like to let my actions speak for themselves. Uh, I've accepted that as sheriff, I'm this thing that they call a 
politician now. <laughs> Doesn't have to be a dirty word when you do it right. Uh, but with no further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and, and get into my speech, the reason that y'all are all out here. And I got it so I can keep myself on track. I'm gonna probably venture off a little bit so I do speak from the heart a lot, but this is to get me back going. So, uh, good afternoon. First and foremost, thank you all for coming out. Uh, many of you may remember from my campaigning in 2019 and 2020, I campaigned on many promises. To me, probably not the, the least of which, and maybe the most significant, was that a vote for John Q. Williams is a vote for Athens all of Athens. Well, that, may, that remains true, and I'm humbly asking for your continued support for another term. Being sheriff has been a welcome learning experience. I focus on the work that needs to be done. Some others, even other sheriffs, like to focus on the perks and benefits that can come with being a sheriff. There are some that can be found. Prime example is, as my sister pointed out so astutely, when you're the sheriff of the county that is home to the two-time defending <laughs> national champion Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> Didn't reach the mountaintop this year, but we'll be back next year. But I get calls from sheriffs and everybody throughout the state of Georgia and some other states say, hey, Sheriff, can you give me tickets? <laughs> <laughs> the folks can't believe that I haven't been on the sidelines for these games that they played in California. They just really won't believe that I don't just soak up all that power. The truth is, I never even looked into it. I was and am focused on the work that still needs to be done. Now, I do assure you, I love those Bulldogs, <laughs> but I love being sheriff even more. So I'm gonna tell you some things that I need to see <coughs> instead of just perks and benefits. I need to remain sheriff so I can see the new judicial center built. This project is critical in providing safety for judges, citizens, attorneys, my staff, and the accused. I need to help see that our schools are safe for our children and their teachers. I need to do my part to bring about safer streets. I need to see an involved, informed, and safer community. I need to see a unified government that unifies its public safety professionals and not divide them. That would be a government that listens to the will and voice of the people, all of the people, not just the loudest voices or the ones with the deepest pockets. We have a good pool of lifelong community leaders. We need to work with them and not target or vilify those who are the people and that the people of Athens have looked up to for years, decades. Instead of calling out pastors, let's work with them. They're not perfect, but you can't tell me that our county won't get better by taking some steps back towards God. So it's not rocket science. The more we care, the more we unify. The more we believe, the more we can achieve. I'm reminded of a quote. I don't know where it originated, but it stands out to me. I've even heard it on a couple rap albums. <laughs> Imagine peace on this earth when there is no grief. Then imagine grief on this earth when there is no peace. So back to this perks and benefits thing. I got three words for you. These are words that stay in my heart. Peace, love, safety. So, I'm not some 
short, barely five foot comedian that started off 2024, as they say, choosing violence. I never choose violence. Make no mistake, I am capable of it. I am prepared for it, but I don't lead with it. The not so fun part about being a sheriff is I get attacked just about daily. Sheriff changed my assignment at work. Sheriff drives too nice a car. Sheriff kept me locked up too long. Sheriff didn't keep this person locked up long enough. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what the truth is to many people. They make up their minds and just run with the narrative. So let me take a few moments to go on the record about what I have done as sheriff and what Clark County Sheriff's Office has accomplished under my leadership. One of the first things that I knew had to happen, because in the Pillian Principles, Robert Peel states that the, the police are the public and the public are the police. When I took office, there was no community outreach unit. That changed the moment I took the seat as sheriff. We created an outreach unit, we allocated deputies and supervisors to that unit, and that <coughs> unit, and these three years have had several successes, many that you heard about today. The back to school haircut event, we did that first in 2021. We had about 40 kids come out, get their haircut, we served them hot dogs. Uh, we knew people appreciated that, so we said, well, we gotta do it again. So the next year we did it, and we had about 60 kids, but we added doing braids. So we did braids forever, not just little girls, little boys get their hair braided too. So we did haircuts, hair braiding, we also did face painting, we served hot dogs, we had games and activities. What I'm describing is community outreach, but it's also providing needs. And one of the things that people need the most is safety and security. Most of these events I'm gonna tell you about take place in the training area of the Clark County Jail. My people are there, and most of the time, nobody's going to challenge us. So when you come out to the Clark County Jail, you're not going to have that element that's going to challenge authority. You're going to have folks who are going to act right, because if they don't act right, they know we're going to deal with it. That's what we do. Next up, the Fall Festival. I don't know if anybody here has been to it, but if you haven't, look online, man. I, that, that was my moment. My wife said that she was brought to tears at the back to school hair. And it was, it was great. And we had a diverse crowd. We had kids of all backgrounds. But this fall festival, y'all, we had the idea that we wanted to provide a safe space. And we'd always participated in trunk or treat. We were like, how can we take it to that next level? So we said, hey, let's do a full fall festival. Let's invite <laughs> Uh, different areas of the government and all our community partners that I've already talked about today to have tents, to dress up and do a judging. But not only that, we've got an area of the jail that has not really been used in the last several years since we did the new construction. So we said, you know what we could do? Put a haunted house in there. And we did. And it was scary, but it was fun. <laughs> But people loved it, and while we were thinking, hey, you know, maybe we get a few hundred people out on a Friday night and have some fun, the first year we did it, probably close to, if not over 2,000 people came through on that Friday. So we knew we had to do it again. This year, numbers were closer, or maybe over 3,000. And this is like a diverse cross-section of the community that's gathered, and there's no problem so far. We plan to keep doing it, but it also lets people know that there's a place they can go and that their government cares for them. Many of our commissioners, some that are here tonight, today came out and they saw what we're doing. The other folks came, so it was hot dogs and hamburgers and popcorn and cotton candy and snow cones and just good old fashioned fun and a hayride. Community outreach. Each year we participate in Faith and Blue. It's uh, one of the longest running and nationwide uh, events that you have. Uh, you try to introduce members of the clergy, faith-based leaders, partnering with law enforcement 
to show what community outreach and involvement is. And we participated in that. It's a great success. We have discussions all the time. We've also, largely due to COVID, there's a lot of people facing food insecurities. And we started off by partnering with Northeast Georgia Regional Food Bank to help them out, uh, volunteering, providing security, and helping hand out foods at their events. But <coughs> when we saw how many people were coming to that, we said, well, dang, if people are this hungry every month, what can we do? And they said it's not really hard. So we reached out to those partners that we had, the Georgia Powers, uh, folks of that nature, some of our uh, companies who are in specifically dealing with jails, our food service provider, Legacy Commissary, they all donate so we can get food to host our own events. And we try to do that at least quarterly ourselves and definitely around the holidays or before the holidays hit. And through those efforts in these three years, we've been able to provide additional food to people with insecurities, hundreds of families. We sponsor basketball, events. Uh, my first year in office, I actually played basketball in the tournament. I'm glad there's like not a lot of video <laughs> of that. <laughs> the legs don't lift and get back up the way they used to. So if we get back to it again, I might get out there, but I might be like my dad. My dad's a Hall of Famer in Indiana basketball and football. And uh, once he <laughs> ceased to play basketball regularly, he was, I don't know if you know these old movies, but there's a movie and they had a main character, they called him Set Shot. Well, that's my dad. He's a gunner. All he does, <laughs> mom, am I right? Yes. That's, that's it. Yeah. 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 Now, he got the height, it skipped me. I'm not short, but he's 6'5". Both of my sons are taller than me. I'm okay with that. Because uh, you always want your kids to be better at you, however it gets that way. All right, so... Movies on the lawn with the sheriff, I'll hit that briefly. We did that for the first time this fall. It was rainy, much like this. It cleared up just in time for movie time. We had folks out behind the jail on the lawn with a big blow up screen. It was so great. We had people uh, offer next time we do it, hey, we got screens, bigger screens for y'all to use. You don't have to pay it, we'll just do it. When they see the effort, there's people in this community whether they live here or just work here or just got money, they will help out when you're trying to do the right thing. We showed Mario Brothers, and I dressed up as Mario. <laughs> when y'all see these pictures up here, y'all know every Halloween, I dress up. I do something. You never know. <laughs> Lastly, what I want to talk about about our accomplishments, the neighborhood cleanups. We partnered with Keep Athens Beautiful, uh, South Waste, and many others, and we've done probably in this three years, at least six neighborhood cleanups where we go out to these neighborhoods, uh, whether it's appliances, old chairs, tires that are left by the road, and we help the community, work with them, not, not supervise them. We get out there, get our elbows deep, and put things in dumpsters to be picked up and carted off to make the community safer and healthier. Uh, we're also part of the 30 by 30 initiative. Just want to throw that out there. There's a move nationwide to make sure that the number of women in law enforcement gets to be 30% by the year 2030. I'll have y'all know that the Clark County Sheriff's Office is way above that. We're probably closer to 60%. Uh, so always accept them women, but we need some guys too, so if y'all know these folks, <laughs> direct them to us. Uh, one of the campaign promises I made we needed to get a hold of the finances. I created a position to mainly, almost solely focus on grants and other alternative funding sources. So we don't always have to go to the mayor and the commission and say, hey, we need this, because we know there's not enough county funds to do everything that the county needs. So if we can find other things, we'll get it. Uh, just one such thing we got, we got a transport fee. Now, proud of this, we were able to secure funds to get a nice expedition that's unmarked that we can use when we have a mental health transport and somebody's not under arrest, but they might not be comfortable being transported, which is one of the duties of the sheriff in a marked vehicle. 
So we use that in those situations. In one such instance, again, I can't disclose everything, but we had a gentleman in jail uh, who'd been in and out frequently. He had mental health issues. He also had some serious medical issues. And we're talking back and forth with the judges because jail is not the place for him. But we can't just let him go. So we were able to negotiate his release under condition that we found some place for him to go first. His parents lived in Texas, elderly parents, not mobile, they can't drive and get him or nothing. His mental health and medical health are such that he can't get a driver's license, so he can't get on a plane. His mental state and medical state is such that we didn't believe that if we put him on a bus, that he was going to make it to Texas. Thanks largely to my chief, who runs the jail, we were able to get some deputies to take that vehicle and drive that gentleman to Texas. That little bit of extra effort is what it takes. We talked about the number one dads, principles over passion. I'm most proud of that part of principles, principles over, fast, over passion because when it was brought back to me, I did say, hey, let us know what you need. But some of the stuff that came back, it was like, ah, we want to give them suits. Ebenezer West had gone in their closet and they had done a giveaway of suits and they didn't give them all out. They heard about what we were doing. They said, well, we'd like to give you the suits that are left over. And from that day, we've gotten donations uh, from throughout the county of nice clothing, not just for the men, but for the women. But if you've seen those pictures of those gentlemen, first time some of them have ever had a suit and or tie. If you can see that, if you can hear them talk, one of the guys wrote a song. And I will tell you, as a sheriff, I'm standing in the jail watching their graduation, and I'm like, bumping to this, I'm like, hey, when your album coming out, man? Because <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't a, a good, happy song. But it's one of those songs that you feel to your core. I see a couple people heard. It's like, it touched me to my soul. We've had folks uh, who've done poetry. And the speeches they give when they talk about the program that Shane does, when they talk about the effects of our mayor came out and spoke at one of these graduations. Like, Man, I've never had an occasion to have a mayor come out and speak, not just to me, but with me, to have a mayor care, to have a sheriff care. And that's what we want to keep moving forward. We'll take this moment to just kind of talk about a few uh, special events that we have planned in the near future. We've secured a grant to bring more AEDs to the courthouse and also place one in each of our vehicles. That was a firehouse subs grant. Uh, those, we've got the last two that should be coming in this week, so we'll have more at the courthouse. Uh, and there's also a plan in place that we can renew those. Uh, we had a situation, we don't get them used often, so you don't think about it. Uh, we had a lady that uh, had a medical event at the courthouse, and we're going through all four levels of the courthouse trying to find one of the AEDs that's functioning. We shouldn't have that problem, but we no longer do. So we'll be soon putting into service a new body scanner at the jail that will greatly reduce the amount of contraband that finds its way into the jail. Jails and prisons all over the world have issues with contraband, whether it's drugs, weapons, or other things. Just some things sometimes that maybe you can use as barter. That will be in place within the next few weeks. Uh, pay attention. Uh, we're going to invite many of you out when we have uh, that press release because it's a really big deal. The smallest amount of fentanyl that gets through can have life-changing effects. And this machine will serve to reduce the likeliness. I can't say eliminate entirely, because there's always going to be a way. But it's, it's one step in that direction. And just so you know, your jail, I'm not going to say it doesn't have a problem. It never happens. But comparatively to other jails and prisons in the state of Georgia, we don't have the same issues but we're still taking this proactive effort to reduce 
even below the levels that we have now. Uh, we'll be hosting a Classic City Praise Fest as a fundraiser for the Georgia Sheriff's Youth Homes. Uh, keep an eye out for that come April. Uh, I'm, I'm quite excited about that. It's prov provide something to kids throughout the state and also celebrate. Uh, anybody here don't like Hear a little gospel music, a little toe tapping. We'll get it going. So, I have one thing. This is a surprise announcement. I'll talk quickly and briefly to the manager about this. So, commissioners, I'm glad y'all here so y'all can hear what we got coming. I'd asked Spencer Fry to be here. He couldn't be here this morning. The reason that he's not here is because we've partnered with Spencer on several things, but most recently, between him and Habitat for Humanity, we've developed a plan to provide training at the jail. Spencer this morning <coughs> is working at the jail with about eight women residents who are incarcerated persons, teaching them to build modules for tiny homes. on what we're going to do with that pressure from y'all, not even pressure, commissioners, y'all know it's coming. So when we talk about the concept of possible tiny house villages, when we talk about rezoning and those efforts, hopefully we can figure out a way to make this work because the vision would be that some of our unhoused population might be able to utilize these tiny homes when they are built in, on site at the Clark County Jail assembled elsewhere, and maybe that's temporary housing for homeless. Who knows how big it can be? The one thing we talked about when we talked about our RECs, our re-entry program, which we created, we started that. There's never been one like that focused on re-entry, returning citizens. A lot of times when you're in jail, in the jail, you're usually not there for years and years. Usually it's like weeks or months maybe a couple years top. So you're getting out. But if you don't have somebody focused on taking care of business while you're in there, you lose your job, you lose your house, you might lose your car. Where do you go when you get out? Because if you only lose while you're in jail, what resources do you have when you get out? So that's why we're doing this job training, but we also hope that maybe this tiny house thing can work so that if you don't have a place to go when you go up, get out of jail, you can stay in one of these tiny, tiny houses while you get back on your feet. Uh, there's always going to be rules and restrictions. There's going to be a, 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 a thorough process to figure out how we can work this out. I've got the vision. Uh, I'm going to be going to the mayor and commission and all of my team and all of y'all to see how we can make this a reality. I'm coming to the end. I'll try not to get off top, off, off track. So for those of you that have followed me from campaigning in 2019 and 2020, all the way until the start of this, my fourth year as your sheriff, I thank you for your support, and I humbly ask for your support as we continue to work making Athens and all of Clark County even better. As I said earlier, I'm focused on the work that still needs to be done. I need your help getting fair pay for the deputies in your Clark County Sheriff's Office. We need collaboration from all law enforcement and public safety entities within the county in order to improve safety of our community. We all have to work together with the community as a whole to provide positive outlets for our youth I have worked with my team to build relationships, and those relationships with key community members are critical in solving the many issues that are facing us. I have lived and been a part of the Clark County community for more than half my life. Nobody asked how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> 
I have family, friends, and extended family here. Athens is my home, and no one cares more about making Athens safe and prosperous than I do. Clark County will benefit from having a sheriff that has knowledge and experience beyond the jurisdictional lines of Athens Clark County. Clark County needs a sheriff that has trained and gained experience throughout the, the country and from ex experienced leaders and trainers from around the world, and I have. Clark County needs a sheriff that knows the law and how to apply it. Clark County needs a sheriff that leads by example. Clark County needs a sheriff that is approachable and accountable. Clark County needs a sheriff that cares. I'm John Q. Williams, and I am the sheriff Clark County both needs and the sheriff that you have had for the last three years. I need your help at the polls to make sure that we don't lose any of the progress that we have made. Vote for me as sheriff in 2024, and together we can continue leading the charge for criminal justice reform. John Q. Williams. <laughs> Thank you.